My name is Trish Moy. I'm the Faith Relations Associate here at Habitat for Humanity of San Antonio. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, is, in all things, let us first begin with prayer. God of peace and grace, we humbly ask that in these difficult times of physical separation, you help us stay spiritually close. We ask that you give us the strength to ask for help when we need it and to freely give help to others when we are able. We ask that you bless the work of this ministry and all those who are a part of it. Allow it to be a vessel of your love for us and for all to grow in faith. Amen. Habitat's Fiat or Faith in Action team is a group of people with a heart for the ministry of Habitat. And and urgency to learn more about it. And so that's what we're gonna to do today. Habitat for Humanity of San Antonio is an ecumenical Christian organization working in partnership with God's people in need to build modest and affordable homes without interest or profit, thereby witnessing God's love in action. And we are seeing now more than ever how vital and critical it is to have a safe and affordable home. Today, you're going to hear from the leadership team of Habitat for Humanity of San Antonio. And because this is a Zoom, in the event that this webinar becomes compromised, we will shut it down immediately. Then we will follow up with an email to make sure you have all the information that has been shared. So today's agenda, we are going to learn how Habitat is managing during the COVID crisis. We're going to learn all about Habitat's newest neighborhood, Rancho Carlotta. And we are also going to hear about the redesign of our homes beginning this fall. After each segment, there's going to be some time for questions. So all the participants' audio are off to keep everything clear, and it's going to remain off during the webinar. So we ask that you use the chat function to ask questions. And always, if you have any questions that come up later or that we didn't get to, uh, we'll try and answer those questions in a follow-up email to everyone, or you can always email me your questions at any time at faithrelations at habitatsa.org. A recording of this presentation and also uh, of the slide shows will be available upon request, or if you miss anything, if you would like to share it with a friend. You are also going to be emailed a survey after this. So since this is our first webinar, we'd really like your feedback on what we can do to make it better for next time. And if you have any questions about any of this, always contact me, Trish Moy, at faithrelations at habitatsa.org. So our first presenter today is Habitat's Vice President, Stephanie Weiss. Thank you, Trish. Um, we're so happy to have all of you here today. Um, we appreciate you joining us and, and really uh, wanting to, to be a part of what we're doing with Habitat. Um, we love that. Um, what strange times that, um, that our August fiat is actually held on a computer in everyone's living rooms. And uh, so uh, we appreciate you going along for the ride and, and determining how, to, um, how to, to best work with us to get this information. Um, I'd like to... Um, Trish, if you can go on to the next slide, please. I'd like to first uh, talk a little bit about our, our summer interns. Uh, many of you are usually on site and you get to, you get to meet them, um, but we, we ended the summer with six interns. Uh, we had five men, one woman, and uh, two were college students, four were high school students. Uh, one is going to be returning in some kind of capacity, but, um, or I'm sorry, one is a repeat uh, person who's who's been an intern in the past. Uh, so, you know, these were the folks, uh, these six folks along with our staff and, and the, the handful of volunteers that we had were really the folks that, that got our houses built this summer. Uh, they, they worked hard, uh, they, they were masked up all along the way, and uh, they kept things going. So just wanted to give a great shout out to them and uh, thank you to, to them being uh, just super, uh, you know, super um, helpers along the way. So um, main part of what I wanted to talk about is, sorry, um, I think my video's on, is that correct? Okay, 
Um, so, uh, so what I wanted to tell you is I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, COVID and how this has all affected everything that we do. Uh, some of you we've gotten to see and talk to on the phone. Some of you um, are, are just hearing from us right now. Um, uh, the, the big thing, the big thing that I want to impart is we are still building. We are doing what we do, uh, and we are we're holding true to our mission, and we are continuing to to build our houses. Um, housing is always essential. Uh, that's something that we as an organization have always known. We know how important home ownership is. Uh, you as our sponsors and donors and volunteers have always known that. Um, but I think we're kind of uh, sharing that message with the rest of the world right now. Uh, I think a lot of folks maybe took housing for granted and maybe uh, didn't, really, uh, didn't really think about it as much. But when we're all um, trying to shelter in place or spend more time in our homes, um, we have to realize how important housing is for our families. Uh, our, our families' needs have increased dramatically uh, in, the last, um, in the last several months. And um, keeping in mind that, that we're working with families that um, they're having job loss, uh, both families that are already in their houses and families that have yet uh, to get into their habitat houses and families that we're just starting to work with. Um, but we're seeing job loss, we're seeing reduced hours, um, we're obviously seeing people that are needing to spend more time at home in an overcrowded condition, uh, in, a, um, in a condition where it's, um, you know, it's just substandard. Um, so those are all, all, all problems, um, all things that we've, we obviously try to address through, um, through our work. And obviously now we're adding kids into the mix. There's more people that are, um, that are doing distance learning from home and, and that's difficult. So uh, what we did, especially in the first couple months, especially in March and April and May during this pandemic is we really reached out to our families. Uh, we're always in good, good conversation with them. We know what they're doing. They, they reach out for technical assistance, um, but we reached out to all of our families uh, and determined who had the most need. Uh, and or determined who had needs in the community. Uh, so we worked with a lot of programs that were already existing. Uh, the city of San Antonio got, um, got an influx of funding uh, that we were able to, um, you know, to make available to our families. Uh, so that was everything from mortgage assistance to utility assistance, in some cases, um, some cash assistance from a new program that was available. So uh, we're really happy to be able to, to reach out and serve our families. If you can move to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so, so we are, um, so, so that's a, a little bit of um, background on how we've been able to continue to serve our families. Um, we, um, as you know, um, Habitat is really built on the philosophy of, of volunteers. And uh, we are seeing 95% fewer volunteers on our work site. Uh, so we are essentially building without volunteers. This is a challenge. Uh, this is not our, our work plan. It's not what we, um, how we do business. Um, but we are, um, we've, uh, it, it's cost us more to get our houses built. A um, couple reasons, uh, we're having to pay more staff. Uh, so we've had to hire more staff. We've had to hi have more staff overtime. Um, you saw those six interns. Uh, they helped us throughout the summer and worked lots of long hours. Um, additionally, we've had to, um, we all know the word PPE now, uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, we've had to buy lots of masks, lots of additional hand sanitizer, plexiglass, uh, screens, you know, in the office to keep people safe. So um, lots of things across the stores to keep our customers safe and our stores safe. So um, all of that really has, um, has created some additional expenses uh, for us. So um, that's a challenge. Next slide, please. The bottom line is we, we need to keep our, our houses on track. Um, even with these additional expenses, um, we are doing everything we can to to support our families, uh, to continue to do what we do uh, and support the families that need us the most. Um, uh, very early on, uh, there was some great funding that, that became available. Uh, we have applied uh, for some of it for COVID relief. Uh, maybe it was for buying PPE, maybe it was for uh, paying for extra staff, uh, but we have uh, been awarded some of this funding. Um, however, I think what we found is much more um, has been the case that a lot of foundations, uh, foundations, corporations, even some church uh, missions committees have had to divert funds. 
Um, maybe they would send it more to healthcare or more to other areas uh, that also had a need. So um, I can't tell you how many grants uh, our grant writer has applied for where um, she put it in in the regular um, time frame, and we get an email back that just came back and said, um, you know, sorry, we've used it for other, um, you know, we didn't really have a grant cycle this time. Uh, so a lot of funding has been diverted um, in the same way a lot of city and, and county money that we get has been diverted. So that, that's a challenge. Um, next slide, please. So um, what we do is we continue to monitor um, all the guidelines set out by uh, the CDC, by our local health agencies, by the local government. Um, our priority continues um, to be the health and safety of all of our volunteers, all of our families, uh, both families in their houses, families coming into our program and for our staff. And um, if we can go to the next slide. What I'd really like to share is, is really some of, and I think what a lot of you will be asking, is some of the added precautions. Um, you know, what are we doing that is keeping the volunteers that are coming out and, and hope to come out in the fall engaged? Uh, how are we keeping them safe? Uh, so I'm going to go through a couple of those. Um, the first thing I want to do is, um, is I know this is a strange time, and we, we work with a lot of churches, and um, I, um, I, I know that several of you want to come out and 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 you feel like if you don't come out you are letting us down um, but what we're telling you that that is is we want you to come out if you are comfortable if you are not comfortable we will we will get this work done uh, so if there's any reason that a group is scheduled and they want to cancel we understand completely respect that decision and can work with that um, i'm going to go down the list of other precautions we're taking we are requiring everyone on our work site um, and in our offices and in our stores to wear masks all the time so uh, volunteers, all of our staff, um, families will all be masked up all the time. Uh, you all know of our hand washing stations. Um, we know that those are important now more than ever. So we will have those available to you. Uh, we will have them properly um, attired out and they'll have all the, all the uh, soap and, and papers and everything that they'll need. Um, those will stay. Um, those will, will stay active and um, house leaders will, will kind of do shifts um, where they'll let one house go and another house uh, go at a different time. So we won't just have 200 volunteers standing at a hand washing station, but um, those will be available. There'll be sanitizer on site. Um, our sign-in process will be spaced out. Uh, so that's something that um, you'll be able to go and know that you'll get, get word of where you need to head off. Um, this is for the fall build and that you'll be able to, um, to go to where, to where you need to. Um, you know, what, what we usually see is we usually see that all of the houses are kind of all together and we have two, 300 people on site that are all kind of working and scattering back and forth. Maybe a fence crew is working on one house and then going to another house. Um, we are really treating each house this fall as an individual work site. Uh, right now, the, um, right now the, the number is 15. We don't have more than 15 people per house. Uh, that number can, may change, it may go up, it may go down, um, but, but right now we're going to make sure, especially for our fall build, that we keep each of those houses uh, working with just the people that are on those houses. The house leaders won't be going off to other places. Everyone who comes will be working on that one house. If I can see the next slide. Uh, sharing of hand tools will be limited. Uh, personal work gloves, uh, we are strongly encouraging that you bring your own. Uh, we will have some available. We'll have a, um, a used pile and a, and a clean pile, um, but, but I would definitely um, be bringing my own um, if I were to go to the work site. Um, any volunteers showing signs of illness, um, we would ask them to immediately um, to be attended by staff and uh, they would be asked to leave. They'd be treated and then asked to leave. Um, we do have a digital no touch thermometers available so um, we can check a volunteer's temperature if they have that need uh, during the day. Uh, we will ask uh, that volunteers that, um, uh, that, that had COVID-like symptoms, either had COVID or COVID-like symptoms in the 14 days prior to being scheduled, uh, we would ask that you not come out to the site. If I can get the next slide. So um, same with, uh, I'm sorry, same with lunch. If, if, you, um, if you are someone who, um, who had 
symptoms of COVID or um, are experiencing symptoms and, and are on the lunch crew, we would also ask that you, you not show up on site for that particular day. Uh, for lunches, um, lunches, as I said, each house is going to be its own site. So lunches will be served at e in each individual house. We won't have a big tent with everyone congregating. Uh, lunch providers will be required to wear um, gloves and masks. Um, habitat will, um, any habitat food that will be provided will be single serve, commercially prepared. Um, sponsors, um, if you provide food for your volunteers, we would ask that it be in single serve containers. Um, but know that you will only be providing food for your own house because you can bring homemade food and you can bring commercially prepared food, but we will only be having that on your particular house um, at that time. So um, next slide, please. So um, at this point, um, I would like to be able to answer any questions that you have. Hi, Stephanie. So we have a few questions today, and our first question is from Victoria, and they asked how families, how many families have been able to meet their construction hours during this time? Sure, that's a great question. Um, we've been moving on with construction hours. Families have had no trouble. Um, we've we've been our family services department has been in constant contact with the families. Uh, no one is not getting a home because they're not completing their hours. So families all along have been able to complete their hours. We've stayed socially distanced uh, and um, we've really had no concerns from families about not being able to uh, be a part of the process. So, so while we have less volunteers, we have been able to, um, to work with our families. So very, very good question, but everyone's getting them in. We're working with them personally. Great. And our next question is, what is the due date to let Habitat know if our church will provide volunteers? Sure. So all of our fall sponsors have until August 22nd. Um, August 22nd is a Saturday. And uh, uh, either Trish or myself have um, emailed out a sign up genius form for you. Uh, so, so in order to um, be involved in the build, we would need to know what volunteers you have before August 22nd. So very, very good question there. What else do we have? And that leads into our next question. If we are not providing volunteers this fall, can we still arrange to drop off a gift or new home supplies for a family from a socially acceptable distance, of course, um, after the house is completed? Absolutely. We have... Um, um, Yes, uh, so so all of you spring sponsors, um, a lot of you did the same thing. You maybe dropped off gifts for the families or, you know, we did the same when we were giving you your plaques. Um, but absolutely, we will coordinate with each sponsor and be able to have you get all of that information. Uh, at this point, we don't know uh, what the house dedication may or may not look like. Um, we're working on a, a house dedication video for the one for the summer. Uh, so we'll, more information on how that may look um, towards the end of the build. What else do we have? And our next question, you answered a little bit, but just to reiterate, um, it asks, will Habitat be able to finish the homes if we don't provide any or as many volunteers this fall? So that is a great question. And that is why we need to know by August 22nd um, how many volunteers we have in the fall. Uh, so I know each of you are really only involved in maybe part of a house or, or you know, maybe all of a house. Um, but we are, that's how we're tallying up is really looking at that, um, at that sign up genius and determining how many volunteers we have. And then we're adjusting uh, what we are doing with our construction staff, what we are doing with skilled tr trades, what we're doing with volunteers that are available during the week. So um, absolutely, we will be able to get the houses built, um, but we, we need to modify our plan based on knowing what you guys are able to do. So, um, so August 22nd, key, key date here, two weeks still. And the next question, for our sponsor lunch, are we still able to cook hamburgers and hot dogs on site? So yes, um, I would say hamburgers and hot dogs could still be cooked on site. Uh, what we will ask is that you bring single serve containers. Uh, so if you are a master griller and you bring your, your grill out, um, you can grill everything, you can, can put the hamburger and the roll and everything together uh, and then give that to a volunteer. Um, you would have to either dress those things ahead of time. Obviously you'd be masked up, you'd be wearing gloves, you'd be having 
um, doing all the social distancing and, and hygiene precautions. Um, but we wouldn't be able to have, you know, just a bottle of ketchup and a bottle of mustard out. Uh, we would need you to do that ahead of time or give them little individually packed, um, you know, m mustards and ketchups. So there's ways that we can do that safely. If you have any additional questions on that, you can talk to Trish or myself. And the next question is the 95% reduction in volunteers due to Habitat for Humanity of San Antonio restrictions or groups going on furlough from volunteering? And this is from Rachel. So the question is, um, so we are not restricting, we are not restricting the number of volunteers that come out. Um, we are restricting the number of volunteers per house. Um, but what we are seeing is that we're just seeing a lot less volunteers. Uh, we, there has been, you know, usually we get to a point where we're just full and we have to turn people away. I don't think since March 17th there has been one weekend that we would have had to have turned one or two or three people away because we were full. Uh, so at no point are we turning folks away at this point. Uh, so uh, we have been able to continue building. Uh, the city deemed us essential, so we were able to, to continue in a very um, safe and socially distanced plan. So it's not so much that we've been shut down, it's that we just see less volunteers because obviously people are taking care of their health or they're not able to come as a group. So we, we understand that and we're just trying to do the best to, to figure out how to get past that. And the next question comes from Fred and he asks, due to financial constraints and lack of volunteers, are you reducing the number of houses that will be built this fall and spring? So this fall, we're still, um, these are houses that we have promised to families. Uh, our, our goal was to build 50 homes this year. We're still going to do that. Uh, Natalie's going to talk a little bit more about our spring build. Uh, so she, she'll talk more about that later in the, later in the webinar. Um, but, but right now, um, we're at a normal schedule. And I know we're trying to plan a normal schedule for next year, too. So um, that's where all of you come in, and, and we certainly need the help and, um, and funding and the prayers to, to keep this going. And those are all of our questions for you. Okay. So um, really, really appreciate uh, all of your time today, uh, and uh, know that we can't do this without you. We can't serve our families and, um, and, and do what we do without all of your love and, and support, and, um, and we love that. And uh, we wish we could see you in person today, but uh, we will continue to um, communicate with you and let you know all the great things that we're doing and, and how you can be a part of that. So next is um, Michael Taylor. He is going to uh, tell us a little bit more about Rancho Carlotta. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm very excited to, to be able to share more information about uh, Rancho Carlotta, which is our um, our new development site. Um, and if anyone, if you have a question uh, during the during the presentation, feel free to use your Q and A box uh, down down at the bottom of your screen or the chat box, and we'll we'll definitely try and um, address as many of those as possible. Um, so this first slide shows uh, in yellow our Linwood Heights development, which many of you have have been working on the past few years. Um, on the west side, and then also in yellow down on the southwest side, you'll see Rancho Carlotta. Uh, so this is our new, our brand new neighborhood. Um, you'll see it's not too far from Coleman Ridge and, and Palo Alto, um, just a little bit further down uh, 35 or, or Palo Alto. And let's see our next slide. Um, so this, this slide shows uh, two of our big regional centers. So these regional centers were designated as part of the city's comprehensive plan process that's been going on for a few years now. Um, but basically these are areas and, and the surrounding areas as well uh, where the city is planning for some really significant growth. And that was one of the things that made this site so attractive. Um, right now, it's, you'll see, if you haven't been out there yet, it's, it's pretty rural in character, but it's going to grow at a very fast pace over the next few years. Um, so the city is projecting 52,000 new jobs, 99,000 new housing units in this area. 
this is actually a part of the city that can really accommodate the most growth uh, because there is some vacant land and there aren't the same constraints that there are on the north side, the west side. Um, so we, we expect this area to, to really grow very quickly. Um, and on the next slide, you can see some of the developments that are actually underway right now. Uh, there's a big 530-acre uh, site, uh, which to give you perspective, ours is 90 acres, which is our biggest site yet. This one is, is um, more than five times that, 530 acres, preserve it at Medina River. Um, this is a site that's going to include single-family homes, market-rate homes built by L LGI, um, but also apartments and some retail. Um, and that's the part that's most exciting to us is that um, that our, our, our home buyers will be able to take advantage of the retail that will be going up um, right at the corner of Watson and, and Highway 16. Um, there's two other developments uh, that have been announced in the past 12 months that are shown on the screen. And actually just yesterday, a third development was announced. It's right at the corner of Watson and Somerset. It's a multifamily development. And um, again, you know, it's just going to drive a lot more uh, demand for commercial and other uh, services uh, to this area. So we're very excited that we're really on the forefront of development. Um, and that's where we have to be. Uh, for us to be able to afford land, we have to get it early and we have to do our development first. And uh, we're not quite first. We thought we would be, but, but uh, LGI started building before. You'll see just uh, almost 100 homes now that they've built. Um, but we are on the forefront, and that's where we have to be to, to, to keep our land affordable. And then our next slide. Um, this shows some of the employment opportunities. So that was another thing that made the site very attractive. There's some really big, good employers uh, in the area. In fact, this area has been an employment center before it started to uh, become a residential area. So we have... Texas A&M University San Antonio, which is growing at just an incredible clip. Um, I hope that you all will have an opportunity when you're down here to take a look at the campus. It's really quite amazing what they've done in, in just uh, about a, a decade. Um, Toyota Motor Manufacturing, um, Southwest ISD is a, is a very big employer um, in the area, Palo Alto College. And then there's a big employer center that's on um, Watson Road, after it turns into Fisher on the west side of 35, um, there's actually a big employment center that's tucked back in there. Um, and you have, that's where you have North Park Toyota, Schlumberger, Aramark, um, Mary Chan, which is the ramen noodle factory. Uh, so there's a lot of good opportunities for employment in this area. And we think that we'll have families that are already working in this area or families that, that may come to our neighborhood and then find a job in, in one of these, uh, with one of these employers. And, and our, our next slide, um, we talk about our quality of life amenities. Um, that's another, another factor that made this area very attractive. Uh, we have some great Southwest ISD schools, brand new Southwest Legacy High School and Resnick Middle School about three minutes away um, by car, just up Watson Road, a little bit over a mile away. Um, low crime, essentially no crime in this area. And um, we do have a, a via bus route. Rachel actually asked a question about, about uh, a via bus route. There is an existing route that um, runs down uh, Palo Alto Road and it provides access to the college, South Park Mall, and then on to downtown. And what we, what we expect to see is that uh, there will be an expansion of via bus service uh, in the coming years. Our development will create that demand, and we've been in talks with VIA already so that they can uh, start that as part of their planning process. Uh, but not just our development, but the fact that there are several other developments in the area, um, that's going to drive that demand for, for enhanced bus service. Um, also, we're just a few minutes away from the Medina River Natural Area and Greenway Trail. Um, this is a picture that I, I took my family out there and, and just to check it out. And if you haven't been out there, this is just a beautiful natural area and, 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 you know, I'm very, very excited that our residents will, our homeowners will be able to take advantage of, of um, this beautiful natural area that's so close to them. And our next slide, this just combines everything together. And, you know, basically we think there's just a lot of opportunity in this area. Um, high quality employment, good educational 
opportunities, lots of quality of life amenities. Uh, so we're very excited about what this area has to offer. Um, and our next, we wanted to give you an update on Unit 1. So we've been very busy um, constructing the infrastructure for Unit 1 um, over the past year. And um, there will be 67 lots for 67 new habitat homes that are part of Unit 1. Uh, we've constructed over a half mile of new streets, um, eight tenths of a mile of sidewalks, 517 tons of concrete went into these sidewalks, um, over 1.8 miles of water and sewer pipe, and uh, a 13.8 13, 13 acre stormwater improvement, a big drain uh, that's going to support the development of the balance of the site. So this is something that we, we chose to take on early in the development to ensure that um, while there were funds available, we were able to, to get that infrastructure in place and that will uh, help us develop the balance of the site um, as well. And next up, we have an actual uh, video, a drone flyover to show you uh, what this development looks like. So here we are, we're starting on the, and you can see the, you can see the heavy machinery still moving around out there. We are wrapping things up, but here we are starting on the Southwest corner. Um, so uh, Watson Road is, is on the far end of your screen. Um, and right now we are um, going down Annie's farm. Just now you can see the foundations for the first houses um, going in. You can see four of the houses have already been poured. And then as we fly around, we'll start heading up Judge Diaz Lane. In the area between um, Judge Diaz and Watson, that will be for a future development, a future site. And then here you can see, um, you were looking, looking down Jim's path and you'll see Leroy's Crossing, which is our, our entrance, the first of two entrance streets that will come off of uh, Watson Road. So we think this is just overall just a really, really beautiful setting and, and again, just a, um, full of opportunities for, for our home buyers. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, and now I think we can do some questions if anybody has any questions. Okay, so our first question is, where will the parking area be for this fall? Good question. So when you, when you turn in off of um, Watson Road, you'll turn onto Leroy's Crossing and the parking area will be um, to your left. Uh, there's a, it, it's the area that I mentioned was for uh, future development phase. Uh, that's, it's a big open field. So just like Linwood, we'll have lots of space for cars and um, that'll be our area until, for the foreseeable future, um, as we develop the balance of the site, we'll, we'll move the parking area around a bit perhaps, but that's where we'll start out. Okay, questions? and Rachel um, wanted to know, is it possible for Habitat for Humanity to influence the location of the next VIA Transit Center? Um, we have been in talks with, with VIA, um, and you know, there, there's obviously a whole lot of, of consideration, a lot of studies that go into them deciding where to, where to site those, those transit centers. Uh, but I suspect, and, and you know, this is an area that is on their radar now. Um, I think they're, they're, everyone in, in the city and, and VIA is learning just how quickly this area is set to grow. Um, of course, developers always know a little bit before uh, the, the city, you know, what their plans are. But um, this is an area that's poised for a lot of growth. So, uh, so we will certainly continue to work with VIA to, to see if that's an option. And Rachel would also like to know um, if the city of San Antonio is going to follow through with a bike lane promise for the area. Um, so I will mention our, our streets are actually designed, um, they're multimodal, they're big 50 foot right away so that can accommodate uh, cars and, and bikes as well. Of course we have wide sidewalks for pedestrians. Um, you know the we don't yet know what the plans are for, for Watson Road, 
Uh, this is an area that the city just recently annexed. So I think that they are are in the process of, of looking at that. Um, Watson Road would most likely have to be rebuilt as part of a bond project. Um, so we certainly hope that that, that will be in the future. Um, and when the city does redesign streets, they typically include uh, those bike lanes as part of it. And Rachel is also asking about community gardening in the area and if there will be education on invasive species. Um, we, do, uh, we do have a landscape uh, class that we do as part of our uh, part of our home buyer education uh, suite of classes. So we do talk about um, landscaping and and the native plants that that we install as as part of our development. And our next question is: um, Will that will Rancho Carlotta be like Linwood Heights, where the infrastructure will be going on for the next section, while the first area's homes are still being built? Yes. Yeah, so we are we are currently in the design process for um, our next unit. So as soon as we start building homes, or actually even before we start building homes, we're, we're designing the infrastructure uh, for the next unit. So that's ongoing. It'll probably be late in the year before we start construction on that. Um, but for sure, you'll, you'll see us um, working on the infrastructure for the future units. And we do our, um, we make sure to coordinate that work with our infrastructure con contractor to minimize the interruptions uh, during the weekend, especially. And our next question is, um, is Habitat using government funding for the infrastructure here too? And is there less government funds for the infrastructure due to COVID? We are, we are using government funding. Um, that's, that's been a, a blessing for the past few years that, that we've had. Um, and, you know, so far, we have not seen a reduction in, in government funding. Um, funds have been diverted um, already. We've seen uh, quite a lot of money diverted for a COVID response. It has not impacted us yet. Um, but I think one thing that, that we've been trying to do, and, and I would hope that all of you will, will do as well, is, is talk to your elected officials and, and talk to your city council person and your county commissioner and make sure that they know that housing affordable housing that Habitat builds is important and it's an important part of, of the COVID response too. It, it's um, both short-term, mid-term and, and long-term. And so, um, you know, I'd certainly encourage all of you to, to help us continue to, to get those grant dollars that allow us to build this type of high quality development. And those are all of the questions that we have for you today, Michael. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to share the information. We're, again, just so excited about this new development, and I hope that you all will be too. Um, next up, Natalie Griffith, our president and CEO, uh, will be telling you more about our updated house plans. Natalie? Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm going to jump right in because I want to make sure that we don't run out of time. Uh, so we do have redesigned floor plans, uh, and so we will be building these plans for the first time starting this fall. Uh, the house plans, we've added approximately 200 square feet to the very back side of the house. Um, we've eliminated the hallway to uh, help increase the bedroom sizes. The additional length, it allows more cabinet and countertop space in the kitchen. Um, and we were even able to add a, a breakfast bar in the kitchen. So that was a really nice addition. Um, we've added a small covered rear porch off the back door um, so that that'll help with keeping the rain off the back door. And um, we've relocated the water heater to a closet off of that back porch, uh, which allowed us to relocate the pantry into the utility area. Uh, additionally, we've added front elevation options uh, where uh, the porch, in addition to our standard elevation with the, uh, the porch posts and the porch railing, um, we've added an option of a more open porch with decorative uh, posts instead of a rail. Um, so as I mentioned, the fall homes will utilize uh, the new plans. Um, and so we're really excited to have you all um, help pilot those. Uh, next slide, please. 
Other factors about the redesign is that the changes that we made were based on homeowner feedback. Um, we completed and committed to the re redesign in February, so it was before the COVID crisis. Uh, we estimated the cost of the plan changes to be between $5,000 and $7,000, um, and we wanted to make sure that the families could afford the, that increase, um, and so they can have a longer mortgage term if they're needed so that it the uh, cost increase should not affect their monthly payment. Next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, we uh, committed to that redesign in February before the COVID crisis, and so some unexpected challenges uh, that we're facing are the COVID pandemic's disruption to material supplies. We are seeing a nationwide shortage of construction materials right now. Um, there's also a nationwide distribution to the trucking industry, so the materials that are available, it's getting hard to get them from the manufacturers uh, to us and, and other builders. Um, we also have hurricane season. It's just starting up, and that usually brings its own material disruption um, and price spikes. Uh, when the hurricanes hit the, the U.S., it does cause uh, construction materials to have price increases. Um, the other unexpected challenge is we have house sponsor uncertainty. Uh, you know, I, I know you all are wondering what will sponsorship look like this fall and going into next year. Uh, as, as Stephanie mentioned, we are going forward. We feel like we've made commitments to families that we need to stand behind. Um, so we're doing that. Um, we are. We know that it's uh, already costing more to build, and so I do have that concern about what that is going to look like going into next year. Uh, next, please. So some of our strategies to overcome those challenges um, is first and foremost is prayer and building on faith. Um, I, I really don't believe that God wants us to stop or to not serve these families that he's guided to us. Uh, so we are focusing on how to overcome challenges instead of spending a lot of time about why or what's causing them. We're really putting our efforts into how to overcome them. Uh, we want to keep the families at the, their needs at the forefront. They need us now um, more than ever. And uh, we want to continue our strong emphasis on stewardship in all that we do. Uh, we daily ask for God's blessing. And we are committed to uh, trying our best to make sure that our work does honor him in everything that we do. Uh, one of my uh, daily prayers is uh, Psalm 28, verse 7. Uh, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart uh, trusts in him and he helps me, uh, and, which fills my heart with peace and joy. And I praise him. And so I, I believe that building on faith isn't just a catchy little name. It's really what Habitat does um, and will continue to do. And, you know, sometimes our work is going to be easier than other times. And this is one of those times that it's just going to be harder. Uh, but we, it's important that we keep doing what we do um, and having faith in doing that. Um, so with that, let's look at the redesigned floor plan. Um, up next is, this is the floor plan. This is the three bedroom. And you can see if you start at the front porch uh, that is to the right of your screen, um, you'll come into the living room. Um, it's a combination living and dining area. Uh, there's a little arrow that's pointing, uh, pointing out the breakfast bar. And so, uh, as you can see, we've kept the open concept, but we've uh, opened up the kitchen area a little more. Uh, the hallway that you're used to seeing in our houses, that's been nearly eliminated to just a small area between the two kids' bedrooms. Uh, the, you'll notice the extra cabinet and countertop space in the kitchen. And going towards the back door, you'll see the pantry now located across from the washer and dryer area. Um, this allows us to have more shelving um, in that area for, for more pantry and storage area. 
Um, you can see the small covered porch off the back, out the back door. Um, and so that, as I mentioned, that'll help keep the rain off the back door. Um, and then if you uh, go immediately below that, you'll see the master bedroom. We were able to uh, change the layout of the closet in the room to add, make the closet more of a walk-in instead of such a long uh, closet as our current design. Um, and both of the kids' rooms are big enough to share if they're needed. Um, they still have good sized closets, but we've, lay, uh, we've redesigned how their layout is um, and how the entry into the room is to try to make it more conducive if people have children that need to uh, share their rooms. Um, and then lastly, we have the hall bath, which still accommodates a wheelchair. Um, so if you're asking what that little uh, cutout is, uh, by the bathtub. That's just a spacer because we did want to still have a bathroom that was wide enough to um, adequately accommodate a wheelchair should there be a disability now or in the future. Um, the whole house is still built to be adaptable for future disability, um, so we have not changed that. Um, I know it's hard to visualize, so we do have a video walkthrough of the home. So Trish, if you will run that. So there is the front door where you'll come in. That's a little hallway to the, the bedrooms. You can see the living and the dining and the kitchen straight in front of you. It's a really nice breakfast bar. Um, there's a good view of the kitchen. So you can see there's uh, quite a bit more counter space and cabinetry in the kitchen. Uh, our, our partnership with Whirlpool is continuing. Uh, and there's a look at the uh, washer and dryer area. Going to the back door and swinging around to the pantry. And another view from the kitchen from the back. Our video is a little jumpy, so sorry about that. Uh, now we're coming into the master bedroom. Um, so you can see uh, straight in front of you, it was the bathroom. Um, and then this is now the new master closet. Um, and this is also a look at the flooring. So this is the flooring that we'll be using in the houses also. Uh, the master bath. Uh, you can see it has a little bit larger vanity than we had before. And again, the, um, uh, coming back into it, we will now go back to the hallway. And we're going to go into the front bedroom that uh, is at the very front of the house. So this is the first of the two secondary bedrooms. And there's a, you can, uh, take a look at the closet and uh, into the bathroom. And so you can see that the uh, width is still there to accommodate a wheelchair if it's needed. And then the other secondary bedroom, um, again, we have the closet. So one of the things you'll notice is the closets now have the side-by-side -side bypass doors as opposed to the doors that open up into the room. We did that to um, keep more of the floor space usable. Um, so next slide. So this is a look at the four bedroom house, at the four bedroom floor plan. Uh, and so I'm going to, uh, okay, there we go. Uh, the floor bedroom plan you can see has the same living, um, dining, kitchen, all of that section is the same. The bedrooms have been, um, and the bathroom layout have been changed some to accommodate an additional uh, bedroom. 
uh, and we relocated the closets on these to the front to the same side that the uh, entry door on the secondary bedrooms is again to keep more of the floor space in the actual bedroom usable um, so next up please Um, so as I mentioned, one of the changes was uh, our, the front elevation. And so this is a, a drawing of our current elevation. This is the one you all are used to seeing with the three uh, porch posts and then the porch railing. Um, and next slide. And so this is a drawing of what the more open porch will look like. So you'll see it's down to two porch posts. And then the porch, the bottom of the porch posts will be done more decoratively. Uh, this just, these slides just show one of our roof lines, uh, but we'll continue to have six different roof lines and each one will have the choice of the traditional porch with the railing or the open porch with the decorative posts. Uh, next slide. Uh, and so that's it for me and so we have time for a few questions. Okay, so our first question is from Jim, and he is asking, what percent of people stay in their home for 20 years? Oh, uh, good question. So um, we have been in existence for 44 years now. Um, so we really track things from when we first started. So um, I haven't broken out by 20 years, but for 44 years, uh, it's very high percentage. We have about 96% of our families are still in, the original family is still in their home. Um, we have had, because, it, you know, 46 years is a long time, um, we have had some of the houses have turned over uh, because of a death of the original owner. And, um, and then we also have buybacks and we have, um, very happy to say, we just have a few foreclosures. Um, but the, the bulk of the homes that have turned over have been because families have either sold them back to Habitat um, or uh, uh, the situation of there was a death of the original owner. And so in some cases, other family members remain in those homes. And in some cases, those houses were uh, sold back to Habitat. And our next question is, will Habitat have all the materials for the fall houses or are you already short of anything? And what happens if you're unable to get that material? Really good question. Um, yes, I believe that we will have all the materials. We have most of them. Now we have some items that we're still waiting for deliveries on. Um, some of it may be that we have some, um, uh, we, we may have some changes. Cabinets is uh, one of the things currently uh, that we are a little short on. We're waiting for our cabinet shipment, which is disrupted. Uh, the plan is to have them all for the fall by the time we get to the cabinet work, uh, but that's a really good example of right now we're short some upper cabinets, uh, so worst case is we'd move forward with the lower cabinets and then come back and do the upper cabinets at a later time. Um, there's definitely some material disruptions. I'm not as concerned about it for this fall as I am going into next year um, and that we're really working closely with manufacturers and our suppliers uh, and, and the good news is that most of the uh, vendors and suppliers we work with understand that Habitat is a priority and so they're very interested in, in trying to help us in any way they can get their materials. Um, but that is definitely something that we are going to be paying a lot of attention to and working on throughout, uh, throughout the coming months and try to really stay ahead of that material shortage. Okay, and I have a few questions about the floor plan. Um, are doorways still wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair? And where are the air conditioners in the four bedroom plan? They didn't see it on the floor plan. Okay, good eye. Uh, so first, yes, the doorways are still, uh, the, the doorways into all of the rooms are still three foot doorways. Uh, so they do easily accommodate a wheelchair. Uh, the uh, 
the air conditioning in the four bedroom is we are relocating that up into the attic um, and we're actually going to be monitoring that uh, the the current modern day units are better insulated than prior um, older year model units um, so our our hvac contractors are telling us that it should not make a difference in the utility bill but that's definitely something that we're going to monitor but for uh, for now the four bedroom uh, air conditioning will be installed up into the attic so if you are building a four bedroom house one of the things that you will be including in your construction is um, a uh, an attic stairway to be able to access that and natalie if you could answer how many square feet are in each house uh, so it is just over 1200 livable square feet and uh, and then there's uh, just under 100 square feet of porches. Okay, and our next question is from Jack, and he would like to know what are the plans for habitat construction next year in 2021? Uh, sure. So right now we are um, we are we have we were planning originally to try to do 60 homes. We are scaling back some, but we're really going to try to finish 57 homes. Um, we've, again, as I've said, we've made some commitments to families. We've certainly made commitments to uh, some of our funders. Uh, so we are, we're going to move forward in faith and, and try to do that. Uh, Stephanie talked earlier about how we have modified our building practices a lot to be able to finish homes um, and to build homes now with reduced volunteerism uh, and, you know, possibly in the future. Uh, we can accommodate any way you want to volunteer. Um, the one thing I am very proud of is uh, most of you all have worked with our house leaders and day leaders, and you know that we have really good folks who are, are good at guiding you as you build the house. Well, they're also very good builders themselves. Uh, so we do have the, the skills and the capability to, uh, to build those houses and provide more of the labor ourselves. Uh, we are looking at how to balance our construction schedule into next year to make sure that happens. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm really, uh, I think that our major builds, our fall build, our spring build, um, that those, we can accommodate uh, a variety of build models now in addition to the two or three that you're used to seeing. And Fred is wanting to know if the resale, resale stores are still open and accepting donations of materials. Absolutely. Uh, our stores are still open. They have remained open. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, we've really uh, increased our use of PPEs, uh, both in our stores and on the construction site. Um, and so we have been very fortunate that uh, that seems to have, have served us well, but our stores are still open, um, absolutely welcome and need those donations. So thank you for that. And also if there's improvements you wanna do in your home or your church or your office, please do shop at our store. It really does help us uh, do our work. And last question is from Kathy and she would like to know, um, because we talked about costs going up, have the sponsor prices also gone up as well? So right now they have not. Um, this fall was actually going to be our pilot. We've done our best to estimate um, and, and be accurate about how, uh, what those costs will be. Uh, as you all are building these houses this fall, you're gonna help us confirm those costs. Uh, some things with the new floor plans, we were able to design them in a way to make some things easier in the construction process, uh, so that should actually help. Uh, but right now, for the fall, the costs have not um, increased. As we go into next year, um, you know, the, uh, we, we don't increase. We try to give you guys lots of notice on any price increases, um, and we'll continue to do that. Um, so right now, I do not see a 
sponsor price increase uh, for going into the spring build. But what we are going to ask is if you can help with an increase, if you do get an increased support uh, for your mission activity, we're, we we would very much appreciate it if you could direct that to us. Uh, and then once we get through the fall and, and uh, pilot our build, know, you know what we need to, if there's any tweaks we need to make, uh, how we need to shape that, then we'll be able to answer that question going forward into next summer and next fall. And those are all of our questions for you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, I know this Zoom format was is unusual. Uh, what I do want to say is I really, really miss you all. I miss seeing you, uh, miss visiting with you. Uh, so I hope that we can be back in person uh, at the next Fiat and, and soon. Uh, and I do look forward to seeing you on site. I hope that uh, you can come out in, in any capability that you are comfortable with. Um, and look forward to, to seeing that. We pre appreciate you all very, very much. So God bless you all. So um, thank you, Natalie and Stephanie and Michael for all the great, great information that you provided. Um, and thanks, thank you to all our participants for giving us great questions and being involved and, and just coming to the meeting, as Natalie said. It's good to see your names if I can't see your faces. Uh, please take a moment to complete the survey that's going to get sent to you to provide us feedback. It'll be very useful as we, if we need to do more of these Habitat events in the future. Um, or if you have any feedback you wanna share with me directly, the email is faithrelations at habitatsa.org. So on behalf of all the families that you've lifted up and all the communities that you've helped to grow and the grace and mercy and generosity that you give these families is a very tangible way of being the love of God and showing the love of God in our community. So we thank you so much for being a part of that. So, you know, we're all struggling. We know that no matter where you are, where you come from, everyone deserves a decent, affordable place to live. And with your help, um, we're able to do that through our home ownership program. So um, if you would like a copy of this presentation or you would like a recording of this presentation, send me an email and I will get that out to you. And um, as we do in all things, let us close in prayer. Faithful God, we ask for your continued guidance to care for those in need in our community. We ask for your protection as we serve families through habitat and for discernment in all of our actions so that they may be for the good of all your people. Amen. Thank you so much again. I'm gonna leave my contact information up just in case uh, for a moment, but we appreciate your coming to the meeting today. Thank you.